Templars have secured a position ahead.
safer on the King's Road now. We must still deal with the apostates, however. Greetings. May I ask you about the Chantry? It is difficult to say what becomes of the Chantry now. They have no Templars, no leadership, and no one left who is worthy of succeeding the Divine. It has fallen apart when everyone needs it the most. I ache to think what this will mean in the days to come. Do you really believe the Chantry is worth preserving? If you ask my opinion, it is. Absolutely. Cast the Chantry aside and new problems replace old ones. We will have learned nothing from history. The people need stability, and the Chantry needs a new purpose. Andraste had a dream for us. It can still be achieved. So what should that new purpose be? A dedication to what is truly important. Instead of building cathedrals and sewing gowns for the divine, the Chantry used to spend its coin feeding the poor. If we are to spread the Maker's word across the world, we must do so with open hearts and open hands. That sounds rather idealistic of you. Does it? I do not think it's so unachievable. The Chantry has many good, honest people. They just need direction and inspiration. They need to be freed from centuries of adherence to tradition and ceremony. A chance for renewal is at our fingertips. It does not have to come with utter chaos. What influence does Chancellor Roderick really wield? He's a bureaucrat, responsible for communicating the Divine's will to the rest of the Chantry. Therefore, he's accustomed to the clerics hanging on his every word, hoping his influence will benefit them. Despite that, Roderick is not a bad man. He's frightened and believes his place is to fill the gap left by Most Holy's death. Some might agree. As far down the chain of command as he is, there is no one left above him. How big a problem could he be? No more than he is already. He sent his message to the College of Clerics. That is the only card he had to play. Dealing with him further only lends him credibility he doesn't deserve. Will the Chantry replace Divine Justinia? They will try. Once the priests withdraw for the Grand Consensus, it is against Chantry law for them to emerge without naming a new Divine. Sometimes it takes days, or weeks, or even months. The problem now is that no clear successor to Justinia exists. All worthy clerics died with her at the Conclave. So what happens if they can't agree on something? Theoretically, they will argue until exhaustion takes them or they see reason. Practically, however, if the grand consensus goes on too long, the Chantry will crumble. Any cleric with ambition but little sense will see this as her one chance, and plenty of such clerics exist. We shall see what happens. The Inquisition must act in the meantime. If they do choose a new divine, will you serve her? That depends on whether she would have me. I am a rebel now, remember? And even if she would, I do not know. It would depend on what type of divine she is. I am no longer in a position to follow blindly, and no new divine could expect such obedience now. I'm surprised you rebelled against the Chantry. I left my own order when they took the wrong path. It is no different. But in neither case did I stop caring. Indeed, I care so much that I feel drastic action is necessary. I suppose history shall one day judge my actions. Thank you. 
for the time, Derek. When will you be able to get the When they're ready. Reports of fade refs and demons keep coming. The people are terrified, and it's only getting worse. The only thing that will calm their fears now is the hope that someone out there can save them. You have to be that someone. No one else has any power over the rifts. Seal them. Your legend will spread and Thedas will learn to trust the Inquisition. Why do you want me to seek out the rebel mages? Why do you care? I've known mages. Some of them were better people than me. And yet I'm free and they're not. It's not right. You seem to know a great many people. I have made friends, and on occasion enemies. It's unavoidable. You have a history with the Warden who ended the Blight, don't you? I had the privilege of calling her friend before she died. The world seemed much duller after that. It still does. You seem to know Josephine quite well. I met her a long time ago. But we didn't become good friends until years later. After the Blight, in fact. I'd just returned to Val Rayo, and she welcomed me back by throwing a diplomatic ball. She was the Antivan ambassador at the time, you see. The ball was... All right. Too many politicians. At midnight, Josie and I left to find a real party. We've been friends ever since. What do you consider a real party? It's not a real party until someone's small clothes are pinned to a chantry board. And that's all I'm saying about it. We can continue this conversation later. You know where I am. Your kind killed the most holy! Lies! Your kind let her die! Shut your mouth, mate! Enough! Knight Captain! That is not my title. We are not Templars any longer. We are all part of the Inquisition. And what does that mean exactly? Back already, Chancellor. Haven't you done enough? I'm curious, Commander, as to how your Inquisition and its Herald will restore order as you've promised. Of course you are. Back to your duties, all of you. <laughs> 